welcome back to the Brotherhood of Gaming Review Show. Now this time, followers, we have an exciting show for you this week. Now I'm going to start off by saying that I'm a big time Disney guru that goes back around 20 years. It's one of my favorite topics that I love to talk about, so you can imagine the excitement I'm having right now just by going over it. Not that much. Maybe. But enough keeping you followers waiting. It's time to dust off the history books, break out the DVD, and ready your Disneyland tickets. Because it's time for a TBOG fun fact. Back in the year 2006, there was an unusual trade that took place between the Disney Company and the Universal one. Disney traded sports broadcaster Al Michaels to Universal in exchange for the rights to the cartoon character Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Oswald was Walt Disney's first cartoon character star, predating Mickey Mouse a couple of years. But due to copyright claims by Universal upon Walt asking for a bigger budget to make better Oswald cartoons, Universal claimed Oswald, basically slapping Walt on the hand. Not happy about the situation, Walt left and began his own studio, which not long after, Mickey Mouse was born. As for Oswald, for nearly 80 years, he's been sitting in the back of Universal Vault, having become a lost and forgotten memory that wouldn't be dug up for what almost feels like a century. In the end, it all worked out. Michael is broadcasting Sunday Night Football for NBC, and we get Epic Mickey. Now with that out of the way, it's on to the game, which is pretty much what you came here to see anyway. Lastly, due to time restraints, there is so much that I wanted to cover in this game, but it was just impossible for me to fit it all. So I only put in the important parts. Enjoy. <laughs> Before you get to the main menu, you're given a bit of a backstory showing you what's to come. Mickey, in his early years, was mischievous and would often cause trouble. Traveling through his mirror, he finds his master, Yen Sid, whom was creating a realm which is a duplicate of our Disneyland in California, but called Wasteland. It's meant to be a world for the cartoon characters that have been long forgotten and lost in time. Naturally, the mischievous mouse's curiosity gets the best of him and he plays with the tool his master used to create Wasteland. Unfortunately for Wasteland, Mickey's brainless. He doesn't know how to work the paint brush and nearly causes Armageddon which would almost be the end of Wasteland and himself. Luckily for Mickey, he was able to pull a fast one and was able to keep whatever monster he let loose dormant and it wouldn't resurface for many, many years, in which time Mickey had become famous, getting a personality change, appearance enhancements, movies, and appeared in a few video games. Not long after, and for reasons of its own, the monster he made those years ago came back to take Mickey to Wasteland, the world of the forgotten. As Mickey comes to consciousness, he finds he's had better days. After breaking out of his situation, he meets a gremlin named Gus. Gus is one of the gremlin species that was created long ago, but never used until now. Gus acts as Mickey's support through the adventure and will give you tutorials, heads up, and may lead you into the right direction. Traveling from place to place, Mickey finds many old cartoon folk from the black and white days who remember him yet Mickey has lost all memories of them. The biggest interactive character, which is half the plot, is Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Oswald hates Mickey's guts, and it's not a shock as to why. In a nutshell, Oswald temporarily sets his differences aside with Mickey until he can help save Wasteland of the plague it has. The story goes much deeper, and spoilers won't be loose here. There are some things that I wish had been resolved a bit differently, but overall the story is a wild ride, unforgettable, long with some dark twists, and it deserves a 9 out of 10. Both the gameplay and the controls serve in the same way, and narrowing it down is simpler. After going through the adventure, I confirm that this is an action-adventure RPG. The action-adventure speaks for itself, and the RPG elements come in doses. Depending on how you deal with characters in the story, it will either increase the capacity of how much paint or thinner Mickey can carry, and later down the line, health boosts can be purchased at stores, and you'd best do so. This game will get very challenging, and dying is a severe punishment. You can obtain checkpoints after you complete a few puzzles or a room, but if you die in between, you respond back to the beginning of the last checkpoint before you accomplished any new tasks. Your enemies, if they come alone or by twos, generally aren't hard to handle, but once they swarm, it starts becoming a struggle for survival. Some of the worst enemies by far that will cause you some real cheap deaths are the broomsticks. They throw paint thinner in your direction in an attempt to take out the floor beneath you, which will have you fall to your death. For combat, you have a spin attack very similar to the new Mario games, but this one doesn't kill, but it will knock your foes unconscious for a few seconds, giving you enough time to squirt them down with either paint or thinner. The camera has its own issue. When you visit small areas or are swarmed by enemies, the camera can be a little crazy. You have a C button to center it, but half the time it won't work. It also serves as your lock-on, which does work, but whom it's targeting is picky. Decisions are the biggest part of the game. Literally everything you do, whether it's story-related, side quest, boss fight, or paint-related, it affects the flow of your progress, in some good ways and some not so good. There is plenty more I wish I could go over, but experiencing it is a lot better than the words of any reviewer. The gameplay gets an 8.5. 
and the control will get a 7.5. The music in Epic Mickey in a case can be compared to the music from Castlevania Lords of Shadow. It definitely fits the mood and theme of what's going on, but nothing really memorable that you would put in your MP3 player surfaces. You may get lucky and find a track or two that sticks out above the rest. The music is what you would expect it to be, a generic, mood-fitting Disney cartoon theme score. It's not bad music by any means, but when it comes down to the decision, you gotta ask yourself. If you were watching a Mickey Mouse cartoon, or any other, would you feel like taking its background music and listening to it on the bus or in the car? Some might, but the majority answer would probably be no. It fits and does its job, but nothing really stood out to be, dare I say, epic. The music gets a 7.5 out of 10. Although the visuals don't seem like much at first glance, your eyes will play tricks on you into believing it's truly next gen. It wasn't Sonic Colors amazing, yet with the cartoonish effects and the structures of the buildings, they get away with it pretty smoothly. I did run into a couple of slowdown moments where too much is happening on the screen, but it doesn't really strike me as being more than a small nitpick. It's rare when it happens, and if you're lucky, it won't. The graphics are sweet, colorful, and nice to look at. No more, no less. And that's why it gets an 8 out of 10. Now that we've told you all the details necessary, it's time for the final call. Do you buy it or pass it up? A very good story with some dark twists, yet feels a need for more. A different experience that easily allows it to stand with the best, yet not perfect. Generic classic great Disney composing, outside the game, may not be memorable. Cartoony with some great level design with some unforgettable backgrounds. Though Mickey Mouse has made plenty of video games before, this one feels like a fresh restart. Warren Spector again stated that he wanted Mickey Mouse to be as recognizable as other greats such as Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario. Though the odds of that happening are very slim, because Mickey has a long history of cartoons and wasn't born a game character, it's hard to imagine such an icon be recognized as such. Though not impossible, mainly because the man himself, Walt Disney, proved the world wrong when they said a theme park couldn't be run year-round. A Disney adventure like no other, it's your call. Thank you for watching TBOG Reviews, and until next time, keep on gaming, followers.